Bibles, turn to 1 Samuel. Oh, there's a word in here. Oh, there's a word in here. 1 Samuel, grab your Bibles, chapter 13, verse 16. You feel good, family? Oh, you feel good? I promise I'll try to preach better. I sound intelligent. Talk back to me, talk back to me. But it's a word in here because yeah, yeah. me and Pastor Brenda, we know what type of church we passed. Yes. And we feel the struggle. Yeah. We feel the pain. Come on, babe. We feel the weight. We, we, we feel the, the temptation to run. But God says stay because the anointing is in the stay. And if you would just trust me in the stay, I, I'll give you the weapon. Oh my God, I, I'll give you the weapon you need. I, you're so closer than you have ever been before. And you're just wondering why, why is the heat turning up? Is it getting worse? And God is saying, you know, you're getting closer. Fight or run, fight or flight. This story right here in 1 Samuel, you just to give you some content. We have Saul and Jonathan, the Israelites. They're in the promised land. You would think things would get easier when you get in the promised land. But being in the promised land, the warfare actually turned up. And they can find themselves, even in the midst right here, surrounded by the enemy. To the point where they're actually hiding in caves under trees and they don't know what to do that the enemy has finally got to them. This is the end. And I love this part of the scripture. I'm, I'm going to read in verse 16. It's going to be on the screen. And it says, Saul and his sons Jonathan and the men with them were staying in Gibeah and Benjamin. While the Philistines camped in Mich Michmash, raiding parties went out from the Philistine camp in three detachments. One turned to Ophrah in the vicinity of Shual, another turned another towards Beth Hung, and a third towards the borderland overlooking the valley of Zeboiim facing the wilderness. Not a blacksmith could be found in the whole land of Israel. Not one blacksmith, not, not one individual, watch this, to sharpen the tool that they need for battle. So because of not having a blacksmith, they're in the middle of a war with a dual weapon. Mervis is out here in the middle of a war with a dual weapon, come on. Single folks out here in the middle of, come on single folks, it's tough out here. Woo. Pray for y'all. In the middle of a war with a dual weapon because no blacksmith is here to sharpen me, to, to get me better, to I don't have the necessary people in my life to equip me for the warfare that's at hand. Mm, I can feel that one. I can feel that one. I'm preaching to myself. Not a blacksmith could be found in the whole land of Israel because the Philistines had said otherwise. The Hebrews will make swords or spears. So all Israel went down to the Philistines to have their plows points, maddox, axes, sickles, sharpened. The price was two thirds of shekels for sharpening plow points and maddox, and a third of a shekel for sharpening forks, axles, and for reponing the goads. I know that's a whole lot of shackles, and you don't know nothing about shackles. It's like Bitcoin. They're just trying to figure it out. But here's the currency. They had to go to the Philistines and be overcharged to get the sharpening of their weapon. Philistines represents the world. They found themselves in a position instead of going to God, they had to run to the world to get their blessing. They had to run to the world and the world can't give the blessing because the world doesn't have the spirit. So now they found themselves overpaying for something that only God can give them. I wonder if anybody ever been here in a season of their life that you're so desperate for your breakthrough. 
you go run into the world for something that only God can do. That only God can give you your breakthrough. Only God can give you your miracle. They found themselves. But 22, verse 22 says this, on the day of the battle, not a soldier with Saul or Jonathan had a sword or a spear in his hand. So on the day of the battle, I want that to sink in. So on the day of the battle, not a soldier with Saul or Jonathan had a sword or spear in his hand. Only Saul and his son Jonathan had them. On the day of the battle, what a terrible place to be in, in the middle of a warfare and you have no weapon. I want to preach this message today, today, family. If you're taking notes, write this down. Unfit for a battle. For the battle. Heavenly Father, we love you. We honor you. We thank you for what you're doing in the midst of us even right now. We ask that our minds be cleared. We ask that our hearts be flushed out even right now. We come to you as we are, sons and daughters in your, in your house. And we ask that you release your word. Speak your word in here, Heavenly Father. Holy Spirit, you have full control. Do whatever you want to do. This is your service. Touch us in a mighty way. It is in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. Come on, somebody say, amen, amen, amen. You can go ahead and have your seats. I want to dismiss our celebration, you, family, our middle and high school. And Come on, family. Can we put our hands together for our online family? Can we do that? Super excited. Come on, just got some news. Come on, pray for our, our online production team. Come on, we are two weeks away, family, where we're getting ready to go live streaming. Come on. Yeah, come on, family. We're, we, they've been working hard behind the scenes, and I'm, I'm so glad that, come on, at 1030, come on, we have a soft launch right now. So actually, there's people who can tune in right now, and I just want to say, hey, we're working out the bugs. So if you see anything, come on, don't send me an email. We're working out the bugs. But on the first Sunday in February, you'll be able to tune in live at 1030. And even for our online family, hey, maybe you're joining us at 5 p.m. We want to say thank you guys so, so, so much. Come on. But as I love my online family, come on, we love to minister to you. But there's also something special about being in the house. So come on, you make sure you still come. Come on. You can wear your PJs here. No, don't do that. Don't wear your PJs here. No, don't do that. Take that back. Edit that out, Chris. Don't. But on the day of the battle, not a soldier was Saul or Jonathan had a weapon. On the day of the battle, I've been staring at this text, and just like I said before, on the day that this is the day, on the day of battle, God's people did not have a weapon for the warfare that was at hand. See, I want to take my time in this message, family, because I, this is a message for maybe you're in the middle of a financial warfare. Maybe you're in the middle of a marriage warfare. Maybe you're in the middle of a mentality warfare, uh, emotional warfare, where you feel as though that you're in the middle of a battle, but you're not equipped for the warfare that's at hand. Has anybody ever been in a season of your life where you feel as the warfare that's coming your way that you don't have the necessary resources, you don't have the necessary connections, you don't have the necessary wisdom? Come on, somebody, talk back to me here. That you feel as though that this warfare is outweighing me and I don't have the necessary weapons to win the battle that's at hand. And, and I just want to ask this question today. Come on, where's your weapons at? And if you have your weapons, come on, this is January. This is a great time to take some self-assessment to say, is my weapon shopping or am I fighting a war with a dual weapon? How's my prayer life? How's my diving into his word? How's my connection with my, 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 my brothers and my sister, the community? This is a great opportunity to say, I'm in the middle of a warfare, but where's my weapon? See, see, perhaps you feel like the people of God here. Perhaps you feel like how they felt, being surrounded from both sides. Come on, pressed 
from both sides. I, I love it in 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Come on. The apostle Paul said it this way. This, we love this scripture, we, but we have this treasure in jaws of clay to show that this all-surpassing power is from God and not from us. Come on. Verse, verse 8 says, we are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. But but you may be pressed right now. And here's what I want to remind you that you still got some treasure. Just because you're being pressed does not mean that you don't have that treasure. So you got to remind yourself, you got to encourage yourself, even when you're by yourself, I still got some treasure. My money may, may, may be funny right now. Come on. But I still got some treasure. My, my, my marriage may be going through some stuff right now, but I still got this treasure. I, I may be not understanding my next step to try to get in this career path. Should I stay on this job or my boss is getting on my nerves or should I put my resume? Should I update my link? And I got this health issue and I don't know what I should do with it. And you begin to dictate your life based on the situations in life. And all I'm saying, God is touching your mind to not look at the external, but actually look at the internal because you got some treasure today, family. You have some treasure today. Could it be that the enemy is pressing you because of what's inside of you? Does the enemy know more about what's inside of you than you know what's inside of your own self? The enemy has a better gauge on your life than you have on your own self. The enemy can see the anointing on your life. The enemy can see what God is getting ready to do. The enemy can see the breakthrough that's getting ready to come. So that's why he's sending out three detachments. Come on. Come on. Not just one. Not just two. But the enemy sent three detachments. The Philistines say, you know, I got to bring all my best. See, we're familiar with the Philistines. Come on, Pastor Brennan. You preached that message on last, last Sunday. Come on. We, 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 we understand the warfare of the Philistines in the Old Testament. This is an enemy that just won't go away. This is an enemy that just keeps showing up. I, I, when I read the scriptures and I go back to Exodus, I love the word that, that God gave to the Israelites, to the Egyptians, about the Egyptians. He said, them that you see, you will, you will never see anymore that this battle, you don't have to worry about them. I wish he would have said the same thing about the Philistines. You probably wish God would say the same thing about some enemies in your life. I just wish that would go away. I just wish that that would just get out of here. I won't have to do it anymore. See, we understand the Philistine. Come on. This is David and Goliath's people. Come on. Yeah. Come on, Pastor Brennan. You say it didn't even take five stones. Come on. It only took one. You preach that. Man. I'm re-preaching it right now. It only took one. Here's why it only took one. Because when God gets behind anything, when the momentum begins to come, you don't even need it. You just need a little bit. When that momentum go, any giant can fall in your life. When God gets behind that, the momentum is gone. I'm just telling you that it doesn't matter what kind of Philistine or giant is in your life right now. God can defeat it. God is bigger than that. God outweighs that in. I just want to teach the text. Is this okay, family? Can I just teach this text? Come on, this is some Old Testament because when I was stirring at the scriptures, even last night, the Holy Spirit began to whisper to me that this is not a battle in the wilderness. See, we understand the God of the wilderness. We understand that God will to, um, direct us through the wilderness. But this is not a battle in the wilderness. As a matter of fact, this is not a battle in the valley. We understand he can be the God of the valley, but this is the, this is the God of the promise. And there's a battle in the promised land. See, what God promised the Israelites, he promised them the land. But he never guaranteed them that they would never see any oppression. See, God can promise you something, but that does not mean that you would never see any warfare. God can promise you a healthy marriage. That does not mean that you guys are never going to argue. Come on, Pastor Brenda. God can promise you joy, 
But that does not mean that you won't feel any despair. God can promise you that God can promise you so many beautiful things. But there are some things that you're going to have to learn to fight for. It is not going to be automatic. It is not just going to be you raise your hand and it's just going to be automatic. No, you're going to have to fight for this. And I want to preach a message today because you're in a season of your life right now where you're praying that God, I just got to get it. God just touched me in this area. And here's what God is saying. There are some things in your life that you're going to have to learn how to fight for. I wonder, is this a church who's willing to fight for it? To go after for the, to go after the promise, because here's what I want to tell you. I want to encourage you today. You have been graced for this fight. Say that again. I've been graced for this fight. I've been graced to overcome this. I've been graced to have the power to do this. I've been graced by the Holy Spirit to think better. Come on, somebody. I've been graced by the Holy Spirit to not give up. I've been graced by the Holy Spirit. And here's what the Holy Spirit has reminded me. The Holy Spirit has come in your life to empower you with power and dominion and authority. So whatever giant that comes in your life, it is not through your power, but it's through the Holy Spirit. And as long as you take some time and say, Holy Spirit, do what only that you can do. Matter of fact, Jesus said it like this in Acts 1, 8. He said, but you will receive power. Somebody say power. You will receive power power when the Holy Spirit comes on you to be my witness. My gosh, I felt that last night. To be my witness. Here, watch this. To be my witness, not just here, but all over. So your story does not end right here because God has embraced you and empowered you to release his story and your story and to be a witness. Come on, somebody, that that you can be in a season of your life. You got to feel, you got to catch this because here's what the enemy wants to do. He wants to tell you that your story is getting ready to end. But when God has called you and directed you and appointed you, he has empowered you to make sure that your story does not end right here. He has empowered you so that you can walk out your calling to go to your purpose that he has ordained you for. So you have to look at your life and say, the struggle, the pain, the oppression that I'm going through, I know my story doesn't end right here because God has empowered me. Come on, somebody. God has empowered me so that my story can continue so that his word will be released. Come on. I can't stay right here. I can't stay right here. Here's the Israelites hiding under a rock. What rock have you been hiding under? What what rock in your life that you can find yourself sometimes on Wednesday hiding underneath? Hiding underneath insecurity. Come on. Hiding underneath a false identity. Come on, somebody. Talk back to me. I, I, I want to talk to some real folks today. Come on. You've been hiding under and you've been trying to like just try. And God is saying it's time to come up underneath that rock. Why? Because you've been empowered to come up underneath that rock. And we can see, but First Samuel 14 is an interesting chapter. See, what I love about chapter 13 paints the picture. It paints the picture that they were being oppressed. It paints the picture that that actually the Philistines, they strategically oppressed them from all different angles. Maybe that's how you feel. That they could not even take the roads to get to the breakthrough where they needed to go. They would turn right and the enemy was there. Come on, somebody. They would turn the other way and the enemy was there. Whatever direction they would go, the enemy actually blocked the, the, the roads that would lead to the resource so they can actually get their weapon shopping. They were closed in. Is anybody in here in an area of your life where you feel like you're closed in? And here's the beautiful thing about 1 Samuel 14. The beautiful thing about 1 Samuel 14, it teaches us how to fight for the promise when you are in a desperate situation. What are you desperate in here for? What are you desperate in here for, for this year? For yourself, for your family? What's the one thing in your life? Come on, I want you to lean into that right there. What's the one thing? You know what, God, I'm desperate for this, God. 
I got an enemy on the left, the right, the front, the back. I'm pressed, God. But I'm desperate. And here's the beautiful thing. Because just because everybody else was hiding under a rock and under trees, Jonathan had enough. That's what I want to go. I just want to anybody in who's who just had enough. I just had enough of negative thoughts. I, I, I just had enough of, 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 of feeling paralyzed in my life. Come on, somebody. I, I just had enough of not feeling though as I don't have progress. I, I, I had enough of feeling like I can't get close to you, God. I, I just had enough. And Jonathan, with his armor bro, they got to the point. They said, you know what? I'm not staying here anymore. I had enough. And it goes to 1 Samuel 14, chapter 6. And Jonathan said to his young armor bearer, come, let's go over to the outpost of those uncircumcised men. Perhaps, my gosh, perhaps the Lord will act in our behalf. Nothing can hinder the Lord from saving, whether by many or by few. My gosh, perhaps, perhaps. Say that again. Look at your name and say perhaps. Perhaps, maybe that's all you have right now, is a perhaps. So you can either, you can either move with a perhaps, or you can sit in prosternation. You can either move with a perhaps, or you can just sit and just wonder. You can either move, I, I, I want to preach to some people right now, where you don't have a lot, but you got a perhaps. You, you, you got to perhaps, I, you may not have enough money, but you got to perhaps. You, 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 you may not have a whole lot going on, but you have a lot. Here's what the enemy will never take, he can never take away from you. It's the mindset that God can work with a perhaps. I, I just want to touch that real quick because maybe you're in a season of your life where you're dealing with the what ifs in your life and you're dealing with, is this going to happen? And you're dealing with on this side of the coin and God is saying, if you would just give me your perhaps, I can work a miracle in your life. If you would just give me a perhaps, God needs something to work with and God is saying, I can do a blessing in your life if you would just give me your perhaps, God can do it. See, see, we can easily teach that you have to have high faith all the time in order for God to do a miracle in your life. But Jesus said it in a different way in Matthew 17. Come on. He said it this way. He said, your little faith, he told him. For truly, I tell you, if you have faith the size of a mustard seed, come on, somebody, you would tell this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Nothing will be impossible for you. Maybe you're in a season of your life where your faith is not so high, but you got a mustard seed type of faith. You got a perhaps. And I'm here to encourage you right now in January that with that perhaps, God can still move. What's that perhaps God can still do some things in your life? What's that perhaps God can still turn that business around? What's that perhaps if we would just give God the perhaps and not run, watch this, not run to another source to look for what only God can do. Yeah. Not run to another way for what only God can do. God can only do it. God is saying, give me your perhaps. See, sometimes we stay in a season too long because we're waiting to move until we actually can see it. We're waiting to move until we actually can feel it. But this is not a season that's based on your emotions. Watch this. I'm speaking to some people who is at a fight or flight. That this is not what you feel. This is all about your obedience. Yes. Yes. This is not where your, where your emotions are high one week and your emotions are down one week. Is anybody in here who's been feeling like you've been on that seesaw back in elementary school? That's where your faith been. And God is saying, I don't need your emotions right now. I just need some people who will be obedient, who are called by my name. And God is getting ready to do something in your life. And we will just humble ourselves and stay at his throne and say, God, I don't have it all, but I know you do. I don't know what's going to happen.
there, but I know you got it. I know the world don't got it. I know my job don't got it. I know my family don't got it, but I know that you got it. So I'm going to sit right here and I'm going to hold on to you until I get what I can only get from you. Because all I got right now, come on, is a perhaps. All I got is perhaps. Oh, I'm all churched out. My gosh. Oh, I, I, I want to preach real to you. Come on. I'm all, I'm all churched out. Yep. I read the scriptures. I prayed all last night. And I'm still trapped by the enemy in certain areas. Come on, somebody. Amen. I came to church. I, I was a church runner. Come on, somebody. Yep. We can be in seasons like this where you're doing everything, but you still feel dull. You still feel unfed. You still feel unfit for this battle. God, why? 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 I'm not stronger. And God is saying, all I need is your perhaps. All I need, I can do something. And here's the beauty. This is why groups is launching in February. Because you need to get around some folks that's moving with a perhaps. My God. Yeah. Were, you, were you stuck on a Wednesday? And you, you log on to that group in person? And you get around some people who are, who are moving with a perhaps. They say, you know what? I know my God can do it. I've seen him do it over there. And here's the beautiful thing about this Old Testament scripture. That this is not the first time that the Israelites have been surrounded by the enemy. See, if you even go back to Exodus 14, come on somebody, they were at the Red Sea, come on, and they were being pressed by the enemy. You got to remind yourself that this is not the first time that my God can deliver me from this. This is not the first time. Can I teach the text a little bit? Because matter of fact that these ones in the Old Testament maybe they probably wasn't the ones at the Red Sea, but they, their ancestors were the one. And God blessed their family back then. God can bless my family right now. If God touched my family all the way over there, God can touch my family right now. What you're going through is not the first time that your family has seen this. And God is saying, just because you don't know about it, I've done this before. i touched this before. i healed this before. i delivered this before. You might not have no recollection of what I have already done, but I've been moving like this. My rep, check my track record. Come on, that's what God is saying. Check my history. Check my receipts. I've been moving in the geology of your family. And what I did over there, I can do it right now. Just give me your perhaps. Just give me your perhaps. Your business feel stuck. God blessed business in your, your family before. He did it over there. He can do it uh, can. See, we pick up back in verse 7. Is this okay? I'm taking my time. Is this okay, fam? I promise. Because I, I just want to teach the text. I, because verse 7 says this. Watch this. Verse 7. Do all that you have in mind. This is the armor bearer speaking to Jonathan. He said, go ahead. I am with you, heart and soul. Jonathan said, come on then. Come on. Come on with me. Come on, banker. Come on with me. Come on then, we will cross over towards them and let them see us. See, here's what God has been speaking to me in this season. That God is giving you some partners for war. The warfare ain't going nowhere. It's breaking news, I'm sorry. But for some of us in here, that warfare is staying. And it's not time to flight. It's time to link up. There's some partners coming your way. You need to turn to somebody your left, right. Partners coming your way. Encourage somebody right now. You got some partners coming your way. God is sending you some people to help you do war better. God is sending you some individuals to help you pray better. God is sending you. Hey, I, 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 want, I want to teach this because hey, 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 hear the voice of God. I'm telling you. Because maybe you're in a season right now where you feel as though. Of everything that God has anointed you to do, you feel unequipped to do it. And you're saying, God, how can I be great at this if I don't have the necessary resources around me to be great? God, why would you give me this assignment if I don't have the necessary tools to complete the assignment? And here's what God is saying. He's saying it to me all this week. Anthony, I'm sending you new partners. I'm sending you new partners to help you do warfare. I'm shining a light on people that's already around you to help you do that warfare. 
that you are not running from this, Anthony, that you have st- had to stay and fight because you have new partners to come along. Matthew 18 says it this way, my gosh, again I say unto you, that if two of you should agree on earth as touching as anything that they should ask, I just feel the anointing in here that God is saying, if you would just start touching hands yeah. with some people that's in it, that struggle that you're going through, touch, touch and agree with somebody. When the power of agreement is established in your life, there's nothing that your God cannot do. Matter of fact, the scriptures teaches us this. It says that as in one, as one person can put a flight of a thousand. My gosh. Ah, but you got more enemies than a thousand. <laughs> so you're trying to defeat some enemies from all by yourself, but those enemies outweigh you because it's more than a thousand. But it's time to link arms. Come on, somebody. It is time to link arms. And when two begin to touch, you can put 10,000 to flight. Not 2,000, but 10,000. When you link up an agreement, a power is released. God's math doesn't even make sense in your life. And I'm telling you, God is saying, I'm getting ready to do a breakthrough in your life. If you would just learn how to touch and agree. If you would learn how to link arms. If you would learn how to get on a virtual prayer call and 7 a.m. and begin to touch and agree. Yes, I'm going through this. I'll share my business because I want to get up out of here. I'll share my business because I want you to pray for me. I don't want to stay right here no longer. I need somebody to touch and agree with me because I'm desperate for more. I'm desperate for more. Stop touching and agreeing with yourself. That ain't enough. That's not enough. In this season, hear me family. Hear me church. What God has for you, you have to go for it. You got to fight for it. The enemy is not going to let go. So you got to link arms. You got to pray together. You got to link together. But not only, not only do you have spiritual partners, you also have spiritual weapons. You are equipped for the battle that's at hand. You are not out here weaponless. You need to identify your arsenal that's around you and begin to grab hold of everything that God has given you. Second Corinthians chapter 10, I want to remind you, family, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty. Somebody say mighty. mighty. Through God to the pulling down of strongholds. The weapons that God has given you has been designed to actually pull that stronghold down. And God is saying that we have got to equip and grab hold of what God has given us and not run to the Philistines, not run to the world, not run to our job. Come on, not run to mama or grandma, not run to your spouse. Come on, you have got to learn how to run to God and grab his weapon, grab his word. Come on. Grab prayer. Come on. Grab praise. Come on, somebody. You got some weapons in here. It is time to grab the right weapon. We're fighting wars with the wrong weapon. Watch this. Saul and and Jonathan were in the middle of a battle and the soldiers around them had no weapon. When I saw that, I began to think about my own life. Father and son. Come on, somebody. I just wonder how many fathers and sons out here in the middle of a war and not fighting with any weapons. It reminds me even my relationship with my son. If there's no blacksmith, are my sons feeling unequipped to actually be a man of God in this type of society? Come on, somebody. Is there any single moms out of here who feel as though that they don't have the blacksmith, they don't have the right person that's in their life? I feel as though that I'm unequipped. I don't have the right weapons. And here's what I'm telling you. The weapon is there. See, the scripture said that the soldiers didn't have a weapon. But actually, Jonathan had a weapon. The weapon is always present. There's always a weapon in the midst of what God is doing. Watch this. Pick up in verse 10. And I'm getting ready to close soon. I'm going to invite the team back up. Watch this, family. Verse 10. But if they say, come up to us, we will climb up. Somebody say, climb up. Because that will be our sign that the Lord has given them into our hand. 
So both of them showed themselves to the Philistines' outpost. Look, said the Philistines, the Hebrews are crawling out of the holes they were hiding in. The men of the outpost shouted to Jonathan and his armor bearer, come up to us and we'll teach you a lesson. So Jonathan said to his armor bearer, climb up after me. The Lord has given them into the hands of Israel. See, see, climb up. Climb up out of this. Here's the beautiful thing about this scripture. Is that they moved on a perhaps and now their language changed. Even before they had the victory, Jonathan was already saying the, the Lord has given them to us. Not will, not maybe, not when, not, come on somebody, but already the Lord has given them. He didn't even put, he didn't even grab his weapon yet. He's already saying it, and by him saying it, the Lord began to move. Watch this. Some of us are waiting for the miracle to happen before the move. And you're waiting for God to do something, and then you're trying to wait and move. But I want you to change your order. God is saying, I'm waiting for you to move, and then I'll release the miracle. I'm waiting for your mouth to move, and then I'll release the miracle. I'm waiting for your faith to move, and then I'll release the miracle. You got to move with a perhaps, and then a miracle is coming. I'm saying that my marriage is blessed, and that my marriage is going to be blessed. I'm saying that my health is blessed, and then my health is going to be blessed. There's some things that you've been stuck on that living a life of saying, God, I need you to do it. And God is saying, I need you to speak it. Come on. And if you want it bad enough, I need you to speak it. Well, I don't feel it, God. Well, you ain't got to feel it. You got to say it. You got to be obedient to it. You got to say, God, I know I'm going through, but I, you are the head. You are my God in my life. And if I'm the head and not the tail, then I'm going to walk in that type of blessing in my life life. Stop waiting for the miracle before the move and God is saying move before the miracle. We got to learn how to praise our way up out of it. Praise your way up out of it. Sing your way up out of it. Hallelujah your way up out of it. That's the beautiful thing. You don't have to stay here. I just feel the grace in here that God is saying it's time to climb up out of that hole. Climb up out of it. Let's stand to our feet. Climb up out of it. Climb up out of it. Climb up out of it. Climb up out of depression. Climb up out of insecurity. Climb up out of the, the, the thought of divorce. Come on. I speak that online. Come, climb up out of feeling overlooked. Not another day of sitting in that hole because it's time to climb up out of it. And here's the beautiful thing. There's a Jonathan in your life, because maybe you're the armor bearer, and maybe you need a Jonathan in your life to come and grab you. Say, we can't stay here. We can't stay here. Not in 2023, no, no, we can't stay here. It is time to praise your way up out of it. Psalms 34, one says it this way, family. I will bless the Lord at all times. Come on. At all times. At all times. Not just good times. Yeah. Not just in my prosperity times. Not just on the mountain top times. Yeah. You have to learn how to encourage yourself even in the valley. David said that he encouraged himself in the Lord. Yeah. When the enemy was after his sons and his daughter, David, the scripture said he had to strengthen himself. He didn't have anybody else to go to but God. Encouraged himself, stood back up, and went right back to war. You're not running from this. I just pray over you right now. You're not running from this. You're not, you're not fighting from this. God is saying, I'm strengthening you for this battle. Because I want you to see how powerful I am in your life. I want you to see that I am the God, even in the valley. That I want you to see that there's no giant out here that's bigger than me. You may not have enough, but God is saying, you got me. And as long as you got me, 
everything is going to be okay. As I get ready to close, I want you to take your time this week, family, and meditate on that. That in 1 Samuel 13, it says no blacksmith was in in the whole land of Israel. That they were pressed on both sides. I want you to be reminded today, even if you can't receive that, hey, new partners are coming your way. Hey, Pastor Anthony, I hear what you're saying. It's hard to praise my way up out of this. I, 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 hear, I, I hear you. But here's what's always there. Jesus. Jesus is always there in your life. The scriptures tell us, tell us this. That he's closer than a brother. He is the great friend. He's always there. So even when you feel that you don't have the necessary people around you, when you're by yourself at nighttime, sinking in your thoughts, come on. I want to remind you we're praying for you. But Jesus always interceding for you. That Jesus always there. He's available to you to sit with you, to talk with you. Come on. He is a person. The Holy Spirit is a person. It's not a mystery. He is a living person that's available to talk to you. Have a conversation with you. can hold. Heavenly Father, we love you. We honor you. We thank you in this place. We thank you for your word of maybe there's many of us in here that feels unfit for the battle, unfit for the warfare. But we grab hold of the greatest weapon that you have given us. Your word teaches us that it says that the Holy Spirit is our comforter that it comes to comfort us, that it comes to dwell with us, that your word teaches us, that it says that you are greater is he that is inside of, that's inside of me, greater is he that's inside of you than he that's in the world. So even when the world seems greater, they're still not greater than who's inside of me. So Holy Spirit, speak to us even right now. Touch us, equip us. Speak a word even right now that we are stronger than we have ever been before. For everyone that needs that prayer, we pray that it falls on great ground. But even before we move from this place, that that special relationship with Jesus Christ, maybe that's you in here for our online family. Hey, maybe God is calling you back home that this is a season where he's saying, That relationship, he's calling you back home. Maybe you got to rededicate. You're out here weaponless. You don't have the strength. You don't have the courage. You don't have the boldness. And God is saying, you won't won't get over that mountain without Jesus. You have to invite Jesus back into your your heart, back into your soul. You have to invite Jesus back. And here's how we want to pray. Just repeat these words after me. Say, Jesus, I am a sinner. I repent. I confess that you are my Lord and Savior. You died for me. You you live in me all the days of my life. I confess. I believe that you are my Lord and Savior. Lead me guide me all the days of my life. You are my greatest weapon. Come on, somebody shout amen. Amen, amen. Family, we're getting ready to go back into worship. As we go back into our last portion of worship, I want to invite you. The altar is open. Hear my heart today, family. Hey, that even this coming Friday, we're going to have our worship. Yeah, we're going to have our worship night. Come on. And and maybe you're in a season of your life. Hear my heart. And I'm going to move out the way. Here's a place where you can come just sit at the feet of Jesus. Maybe you're feeling weaponless. Maybe you're feeling defeated. They're just not even right now at this altar on that Friday night. I'm telling you, family, don't miss it. Don't miss it. Come as you are and just come sit quiet. 
Say, Jesus, I feel empty. I feel weaponless. Equip me because I'm ready for war. Amen. How many are believing for a financial miracle today? Amen. And we heard such a powerful message that God can do it. And we just need a perhaps. And maybe we need that perhaps faith as it relates to our finances. And this is a time where we have the opportunity to give by faith, where we can bring our tithes, bring our offerings. And when you give by faith, that's not a guarantee that you are suddenly going to get more money, right? It's, it's a faith move and it's an obedience move according to what God is speaking to you. In Matthew 25, I was reminded of the scripture of the talents where there are these three individuals who a master gave each of them three different amounts. The first he gave five talents, and talent is just a currency. He gave five talents, two talents, and one talent. The five and the two talents took the money, invested it, created more, and the master came back and was so proud. The final servant had one talent, and because of fear, because of trepidation, because he didn't know what to do. He just buried the talent. And when the master came back, he said, man, at least you could have invested in it. I've gotten something back. And what we don't want to do is bury our talents, whether it's financial talents or time talents or anything else. And so this is an opportunity where if you are blessed by this church and blessed by this ministry, that you can give back. So you can see on the screen that there are various ways to give securely. If you are worshiping with us online, you can click the link to give. And um, if you are forgetful like me, you can put it on auto draft. Um, so, you know, if you, ha if you have that level of faith and you want to put that on auto draft, you can do that. But again, an opportunity to give back to the kingdom. And my prayer is that you don't become like that, the servant with the one talent, the one talent that just buried the gift. And so I want to go ahead and pray over what it is that God has um, given you insight to give. So Lord, we thank you for this opportunity to give. Lord, I pray for those that are believing for a financial miracle, that you give them strategy, that you give them provision, that you give them wisdom on how to steward their finances, Lord. I thank you that those that are um, here and able to give, that they're able to give, and those um, that don't yet have, that you uh, comfort them, even as they have this desire, Lord. Lord, I pray that each one in this room and in this space um, has the faith like those of the five talent and the two talent to multiply what it is that you have given them in Jesus name. Amen. Amen and amen. Good. Hello church. My name is Sarah Carter. I've been up here a couple of times, but today I'm apparently the main event. I want to thank Pastor Ant and Julius for hyping my announcements yes. <laughs> with the message and with the leading about community. I Bring you the main event of Groups Launch next Sunday. Woo! Okay, perhaps this is your time. Perhaps this is your season to connect. Perhaps this is the time you've been waiting for, for a group that feels designed for you to bring you those connections you need. Well, this is the chance. We have groups for men. We have groups for ladies. We have groups to commingle. We're online. We're dinner. We're lunch. We're all over. We're here for you, and we want to be with you. So please log on. Get a little preview. They're not all up there. Some of them are on, but get a little preview. Check them out. And then next Sunday, sign up. Now, my next awesome announcement, Pastor Ann kind of teased it, but um, is our worship night this coming Friday. Woo! It's at the garden. How appropriate. I think Leah mentioned that last time. If you're like me and you think you can sing, but you're really grateful for Marquise and the team to keep the music loud so no one else has to listen to you sing, this is your event. Come out and join us, and it'll be almost the end of our fast. So we got that to look forward to as well. I look forward to seeing all of you next Friday. Casey, you want to bless us? Yes, it's time for the benediction. And I'm Casey. Every time I get up here and I'm like, what is my name? Casey Sharperson. Great to meet you. But now 
I get to do the benediction. So if you feel comfortable, go ahead and close your eyes. Lord, I thank you for bringing us together. Lord, I pray um, that we remember that we get to lock arms in community, Lord. I pray that those that are seeking a community and seeking breakthrough and seeking freedom, that they receive that freedom today and that they receive that clarity today and that they walk by faith in Jesus' name. In our benediction, the Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.